Today is the 19th of January, 2022, and at this time we have the opportunity to set our hearts on this practice of mindfulness, to improve our mindfulness. And this word mindfulness, we likely know, means recollection, correct recollection, which is right mindfulness. And mindfulness that's incorrect is incorrect recollection, a wrong recollection. And so when we have right view, we know suffering, its origin, its cessation, and the path leading to that cessation. We practice and train in mindfulness. And we may ask, well, why should we train in mindfulness? Why should we practice to cultivate mindfulness? And then we ask, we should ask ourselves, well, is our mindfulness in the present moment, is it sufficient? And it's likely sufficient to do our study and work, to do our activities. But when it comes to the moods and sense impressions that enter into our hearts all throughout the day, the mind gets lost in these easily. It's lost quite easily in all these moods and sense impressions, all these aramanas. It gets lost in all of them from the six senses. So we see that we're, it's like we're sleeping, we're not awake, we haven't woken up. And so we, then we ask, well, what does it mean, sleeping? What does it mean to wake up? Sleeping means not having mindfulness. And so we see people that are physically asleep and they can't fix anything in their lives, they can't think their way out of a situation, they don't have mindfulness. But when we wake up, we see that it's a, a sleep state, that it's just a matter of proliferation, it's not something that's true. So in the present moment, if we don't have mindfulness, we don't have wisdom, we're like someone who's sleeping, someone who's lost and deluded, and this is the same as sleeping. When Pucha would teach that, oh, we've like, we likely know what a dead person is, We've seen someone who's died uh, bodily death. They've died, uh, their bodies have died. But have we seen a dead person who can still walk and breathe? This one we don't know. Someone who walks here and there, who still has their in and out breath, but they're dead through delusion, they're dead through ignorance, because they're clinging to everything as me and mine, as self, giving rise to greed, aversion, and delusion, and lacking mindfulness. So when we wake up, we're not sleeping, but the mind may be sleeping through ignorance. The mind hasn't woken up. So therefore we practice and train in mindfulness in order for our hearts to wake up. And the heart that is woken up, that's wakeful, is the heart that goes to Buddha. And to do this one must have effort. It's something that's not easy to do, but we have to put forth effort and perseverance. It's something that we're capable of doing to bring the mind from a state of delusion, being lost, to the mind that's wakeful. And so one day we s this happens, one day we see this. And so the mind proliferates takes everything to be a self, a me, a mine, a you and a yours. And these moods and sense impressions enter the heart a lot. Some sense impressions we like and we proliferate based on that. Others we dislike and we proliferate based on that. There's greed, aversion, delusion, love, fear, hatred, and so on. And mind proliferates based on all these. And for monastics that lack a meditation object, that they don't have their meditation object with them, they might go to a cremation ground. They have fear of elephants, fear of ghosts, fear of tigers, and so on, and they proliferate based on those fears. But when mindfulness arises, then one can see that all of this fear merely comes from proliferation. In reality, ghosts aren't bothering oneself. The tigers and elephants, there's not very many. 
there's not very many that are harming humans, but one proliferates about these things in the first place, and the mind gets deluded and lost in that. So we practice and train our hearts, train in bhavana, cultivating our minds with our meditation object to give rise to mindfulness, to have bhuto a lot, and this is important, to have the mind hold on to this bhuto in order to stop the proliferation and busyness of mind. There was one disciple of Lungpu Cha who went to teach meditation in the United States, and he would teach people to just stop thinking, stop proliferating, stop the busyness of mind. This is something that one can do to bring the mind to peace. And when the mind's peaceful, then one is then able to know the truth, to study the truth. And we ask, well, what is, what is the truth? When we're lost, we don't know it. And we take everything to be a self because we don't understand the way things are. We take things to be a me, a mine, a you and a yours. But when we see clearly, we see that in truth and see in terms of Dhamma that there's no self there. And when we see this, then we're able to cure the suffering in our hearts. This is something that we're able to do. We see that of all the things in the world, of all the things that we take to be important, that which is truly important is the wisdom to know things in time to know them as impermanent, to know condition formations as impermanent and uncertain, to know that we must be separated from that which we love, that all that arises when that happens is suffering. It's nothing but suffering. So we see that conditioned things, these bodies of ours, we must be separated from them. But when it really happens, when we're really separated from our bodies, or separated from that which we love, we see that we don't really understand that we're lost, we're still clinging, and suffering arises. So therefore, in this present moment, we set our mindfulness well with the, to see the six sense objects, to see them as they arise, and to see these six sense objects of uh, taste, smell, touch, sight, sound and mind objects, to see them as they enter the heart. So we have to have effort in this, to know sense sense impressions as they arise, and to see them as they arise. We see how is the mind, the mind that's liking and disliking all the time. So we come to bring the mind to the middle, and this middle is the way to see the Dhamma. There was one occasion where I was walking meditation. My body and mind felt very light and at ease. And that night, Lumpu Cha gave a Dhamma talk about the correct way of Dhamma practice. And he taught that the correct way of Dhamma practice is the mind that's not liking and disliking. This is the way to see the Dhamma. So in the beginning, we need to have a lot of mindfulness. We have generosity and virtue as our foundation. We must be sincere to bring the mind to peace, to be able to do this. And when we're able to bring the mind to peace, give rise to mindfulness and wisdom in our hearts, then we can understand clearly to see everything as impermanent and uncertain. And when we have correct samadhi like this, we contemplate all sense objects whether it's liking and disliking, we contemplate it as unsure, as uncertain, or it's love or hate or fear or greed or hatred, we contemplate it as uncertain. There was one occasion in the cremation ground where I was feeling very afraid. I felt so much fear that I felt that my mindfulness would be totally absent. So we see it's not easy for the Dhamma to arise with so much fear like that. In this cremation ground, there was so much fear that it felt like I would just run away. The mind wanted to run away. It was as if in that moment there was 
no mindfulness, samadhi, or wisdom at all, or very little. And on this occasion, I went to enter my umbrella tent and looked at the in and out breathing. And on this occasion, the mind was able to gather together in samadhi. And this was a great miracle to see that this fear arose to such a great degree, feeling like there was no refuge at all. But then the mind was able to enter into samadhi, to collectedness. The mind was still and peaceful and empty. And once the mind had gathered into this peaceful and empty state, I left the mosquito net tent and went to walk in the exact same location where I just felt such great fear. And I saw that there was nothing there at all. It was all empty. That nature is just that way. It's just a feeling in the heart. It's just the defilements proliferating and giving rise to proliferation in the heart. So we see that this training of the mind is something that's very important. We have to have effort. So we feel we have suffering, we have problems. And when samadhi and wisdom arise in the heart, they're able to cure the suffering. So may you have effort and perseverance in this to bring the mind to peace, to contemplate the body, to see clearly into the nature of the body and conditioned things, to see the Dhamma, which can make the mind empty. So may you do this a lot. It won't take a long time. And for the lady, they don't need to enter cremation ground and practice in their house and practice to have a lot of mindfulness. One can do this at home, practicing using the meditation word, for instance, Buddha Dhammo Sango, to cultivate a lot of mindfulness. So may you cultivate mindfulness. <laughs>